So let's talk about the force of hope. So Abraham hoped in faith that he would become the father of many nations as he had been promised. He didn't weaken in his faith when he considered the complete impotence of his own body, which was as good as dead because he was about 100 years old, <laughs> or when he considered the barrenness of Sarah's womb. No unbelief or distrust made him waver. The promises of God were in him and remained in him and strong in him. And he grew strong and empowered by his faith because of that. David and Joyce believe that their ministry in the body of Christ will grow each year. They always want to help more people. But they also realise that if God has a different path or different plan and they end up at the end of the year with no growth, everything the same as when they started, they can't let that situation control their joy. They believe for many things, but beyond them, beyond what they believe and want, they believe that Jesus is the answer and that Jesus' way is the best way. So if things go differently, then they celebrate things going the way Jesus preferred them to go. We don't always know what's going to happen. We just know it will always work out for good. The more positive we become, the more we will be in the flow of God. God is certainly positive and his certainty is positive. And to flow with him, we must also be positive. Um, we have many adverse circumstances. You may be thinking, Joyce, if you knew my situation, Sunita girl, you wouldn't expect me to be positive. Hmm. Well, we encourage you to reread Romans 4, 18 to 20, which is the report for Abraham. After sizing up his situation, you know, he didn't ignore the facts. He considered things about, but briefly, um, he considered the utter impotence of his own body and the barrenness of Sarah's, Sarah's womb. And although all human reason for his belief was absent, he hoped in faith. So it's like, you know, when you believe, you know, me believing I'm going to have a hit record or me believing I'm going to have a hit show or me believing I can run the London Marathon. You know, people who know me or knew me in those days were like... Yeah, right. You know, they know I hate running. So how am I going to run and finish the marathon? But I believed it. And I didn't listen to the unbelief. I believed it. I resolved to stay in that belief. I put my faith in it. I prayed to God to help me do it. And I did it. And everybody else went, wow, you knew. I knew. God knew. Um... So Abraham was very positive about his very negative situation. The hope was anchored in his soul. You know, hope is the force that keeps us steady in times of trial. So don't ever stop hoping. If you do, you're going to have a miserable life. If you're already having a miserable life, that's because you have no hope. So start hoping. Don't be afraid. I can't promise you that things will always turn out exactly the way you want them to. I can't promise you that you'll never be disappointed. But even in disappointing times, if they do come or when they do come, you can still hope and be positive. Put yourself in God's miracle working realm and expect a miracle in your life. Expect good things. Expect to receive and receive to expect. <laughs> um, the Lord waits looking and longing to be gracious to you therefore he lifts himself up so that he can have mercy on us and show loving kindness to us for the Lord is God of justice blessed, fortunate to be envied or all of us who wait for him who expect and long for him for his victory, his favour, his love, his peace, his joy, 
and his matchless, unspoken companionship. Phew. Isaiah 30, 18. This passage has become one of the favourite scriptures, and if you meditate on it, it will begin to bring great hope. In it, God is saying that he's looking for someone to be gracious to, to be good to. But it can't be someone with a sour attitude or a negative mind. It has to be someone who's expecting, looking forward to, and longing for God to be good to him. 